my gosh, this is so heavy. I need help. Help me, Mabel. Mabel, I need help. Oh my gosh, I gotta drop everything. Oh, 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 phew. Thank you. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you, Kara. Thank you, Mabel. Woo. Thank you so much. Woo. Oh, hi, Cry Central. I'm so glad I can rely on my family for help when I have a problem that needs solving. If it's doing the dishes or cleaning the house, I call out to Mabel because she's super duper duper responsible and I really love it. If I need help in making or fixing something, my husband is super duper handy and he helps me all the time. If I just need a hug or kiss to feel better, I ask baby Karis to give me snuggles. She's really good at that too. But when I really have a problem that I believe is out of my control, I turn to God in prayer and put my trust in Him knowing that He is sovereign. Hmm, I'm curious, who do you turn to when you have a problem that needs to be solved? Take some time to discuss that with your family. Zachary, who do you turn to when you need help? Why? Why him? Because he knows everything. Mama, help me. When I have a problem or need help, I go to my parents because I am comfortable with talking to them. And I also pray to God about it. I turn to God when I have a problem to solve because he has all the answers. My mommy and my daddy helps me because um, they know what to do. When I have a problem, I go to God. I pray to him and I read his word because he gives me all the answers and shows me what to do. Oh, so good to hear all your answers. Today, we are going to hear a story from the Bible about some people who turned to Jesus with their problems. They went to him because no one else could help. So stay tuned. Bye. Stay happy. Bye. <laughs>
Hi, CCSC kids and CCSC families. I'm Pastor Dinko, and I'll be reading the Bible passage with you today. Our passage is Mark chapter 5, verses 21 to 43. I'll give you some time to turn there in your Bibles. Mark chapter 5, verses 21 to 43. Let's turn there together. Of course, Mark comes after Matthew. And we're going to turn to Mark chapter 5. And then we're going to start at verse 21. I'll read all the odd number verses, and you can read all the even number verses out loud from home. And if you have any trouble with that, you can definitely ask your parents for help as you read this together. And so I'll read one verse, and then you read the next verse, and then I'll read the next verse after that, and we'll keep going like that. So here is God's word from Mark chapter 5, starting from verse 21. And when Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered about him, and he was beside the sea. And implored him earnestly, saying, My little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her, so that she may be made well and live. And there was a woman who had a discharge of blood for twelve years. She had heard the reports about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. And immediately the flow of blood dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. And his disciples said to him, You see the crowd pressing around you, and yet you say, Who touched me? But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling, and fell down before him, and told him the whole truth. While he was still speaking, there came from the ruler's house some who said, Your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? And he allowed no one to follow him except Peter and James and John, the brother of James. And when he had entered, he said to them, Why are you making a commotion and weeping? The child is not dead, but sleeping. Taking her by the hand, he said to her, Talitha kumi, which means, Little girl, I say to you, arise. And he strictly charged them that no one should know this, and told them to give her something to eat. This is God's word. I miss you all very much, and I can't wait to see you guys all in person, hopefully sooner than later. Have a good rest of your Sunday. Bye. Jesus stood on the shore of the Sea of Galilee, and a large crowd gathered around him. Jairus, one of the leaders in the synagogue, fell at Jesus' feet and begged for his help. My daughter is about to die. Please come touch her so she will be healed and live, he said. Jesus went with Jairus, and many people followed, crowding around him. In the crowd was a woman who had been bleeding for 12 years. 
She had seen many doctors and had spent all her money trying to get better, but no one could help her. She was getting worse. The woman said to herself, If I touch even Jesus' clothes, I will be healed. She came up behind Jesus in the crowd and touched his clothes. Immediately, her bleeding stopped and she knew she was healed. At that moment, Jesus felt that power had gone out of him. He turned around. Who touched my clothes? He asked. Jesus' disciples pointed out that many people were crowded around him, but Jesus kept looking around. The woman, knowing she was healed, came forward and fell before Jesus. She told him what had happened. Jesus said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. You are healed. While Jesus was speaking, some men came from Jairus' house and told Jairus, Your daughter is dead. Do not bother Jesus anymore. Jesus heard what the men said, and he told Jairus, Do not be afraid. Just believe. Jesus and three of his disciples went to Jairus' house. People there were crying and wailing loudly. Why are you crying? Jesus asked. The child is not dead. She is sleeping. The people laughed because they did not believe Jesus, and he told them all to leave. Jesus took Jairus and his wife into the room where the child was. He took the girl by the hand and said, Little girl, get up. Immediately, the girl got up and began walking around. Jairus and his wife were amazed. Jesus told them to give the girl some food and to not tell anyone what had happened. By healing the woman and raising the little girl from the dead, Jesus showed his power as the Messiah. Jesus died on the cross and rose again to save people from sin and death. When we trust in Jesus, God forgives our sins and changes us to be more like his son. Hi, everyone. Last week, we heard a story about a time Jesus healed some men with a skin disease called leprosy. Do you guys remember that? Jesus healed 10 men, but only one was saved and put his faith and believed in Jesus. We learn that when we trust in Jesus by faith, he heals us from something greater than a disease. He saves us from our sins. And that's what happened to that one guy. We can thank and worship him for making us new in Jesus Christ. So in today's story, as we heard, Jesus healed more people. When people heard that Jesus had the power to heal, they brought their friends, they brought their family, they brought their neighbors, everybody. They brought crowds and crowds and crowds of people surrounded Jesus. So as Jesus stood on the shore of the Sea of Galilee, a man fell at Jesus' feet and begged him for his help. His daughter was about to die. Quiz time. Do you remember the name of the man who went to Jesus for help because his daughter was dying? Who was paying attention? Was it A, Mark, B, Superman, or C, Jairus? Yes, you're right. It was C. Jairus. Jesus was going with Jairus to heal his daughter when suddenly a woman touched Jesus. And you know what? I'm sure a lot of people were touching Jesus at that time because there were so many people. But he said that he felt that power had gone out of him. If you're listening, why did the woman touch Jesus? Was it A. She was suffering for so many years. Or B, she was cold. 
Or C, she thought his clothes looked super duper soft. Good. A is the answer. The woman had been suffering for so many years, no one could help her. Jesus was her only hope. She had faith that he could heal her just by touching his clothes, and she was healed. But while that happened, Jairus just received news that his daughter had died. Man, how do you think Jairus felt? He must have been so devastated. What did Jesus say to Jairus at that time? A, I'm so sorry. B, do not be afraid, just believe. Or C, do not be sad. You're right, B. Jesus said, do not be afraid, just believe. Wow. Jesus went to Jairus' house and healed the girl from the dead. Oh my goodness. How amazing is that? That's so crazy. By healing the women and raising the girl from the dead, Jesus showed his power over death and that he could defeat death itself. Wow. And not only that, Jesus showed that power, same power again, when he died on the cross and rose again from the dead and saved his people from sin and death. Jesus showed his power that he is the one and true Messiah. When we trust in Jesus, God forgives our sins and changes us to be more like his son, Jesus Christ. Jesus is our ultimate healer. So kids, I want to encourage you this week, and not only this week actually, every day, I want to encourage you to turn to Jesus in faith. Just like Jairus who begged Jesus to save his dying daughter, and just like the woman who bled for so many years and just wanted to touch Jesus' clothes. Trust in his power to heal because only Jesus died on the cross and only he was able to rise again from the dead and ascend to heaven. He only has the power. So even though Jesus is not physically here today on earth with us, we can always, 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 always pray and ask God to heal people who are sick, who are hurting, or who are in need all over the world, as well as the people in our family and our friends. And God, in his time, will answer all of your prayers. And whether or not God grants immediate healing, we can rest and find comfort and true hope knowing that he brings ultimate healing and ultimate peace in Jesus Christ. He gives us eternal life and we will be his forever and ever and ever. Continue to discuss with your family and friends throughout the week who you turn to for help and practice turning to God in prayer. Let's close in prayer. Dear God, we are in awe of your power over death and your power over sin. We know you are all-knowing, all-powerful, and although there is so much hurt and sin in this world, and so many people have difficulty understanding and loving each other's differences, we know it is in your time and in your plan that you will bring and have already brought ultimate healing and love through your Son, Jesus Christ. We ask you to hear our prayers and our cries, to see change in the hearts of our families here at CCSC, as well as throughout the whole world. We thank you and we, we thank you for the hope you bring. In Jesus' name, amen. Bye. Hi, everyone. Hi, everyone. We just learned that Jesus healed a woman who was bleeding for 12 years, and he raised a girl from the dead. Jesus showed his power as the Messiah, our Savior. 
He died on the cross to save us from ourselves. And when we trust in Jesus, we become more and more like him. We see this in our Bible verse today, and it's from Isaiah chapter 53, verses 4 through 5. Let's read it together. <clears throat> Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering. Yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him. And by his wounds, we are healed. The memory verse is a bit long, but to help us memorize it, we are going to take key words and write them down on flashcards. You can do this with us or with your family at home. All you need are paper or flashcards like this and markers. The key words we're going to use today are pain, suffering, punished, God, afflicted, <clears throat> pierced, transgressions, crushed, iniquities, punishment, peace, him, wounds, and healed. That's 14 words in total. Okay, let's get started. Are you ready? <clears throat> All right, let's get started. So we just finished writing down our key words on our flashcards. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and recite the memory verse together along with our flashcards. So it's from Isaiah chapter 53, mm -hmm. verses 4 through 5. Are you ready? Uh-huh. Surely he took up our pain. pain and bore our suffering, mm -hmm. yet we considered him... Punished, punished by God. God, stricken by him and afflicted, afflicted. but he was pierced, pierced for our transgressions. transgressions. He was crushed by our iniquities, 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 the punishment the punishment that brought us peace was on him. And by his wounds, we are healed. Where is it from? Isaiah. 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 Chapter 53. Chapter 53. Verses 4. Verses 4. Through 5. Through 5. Good job. Game 5. We hope you enjoyed this time together with family memorize the me memorizing the memory verse. Until next time, bye. bye. Hi everybody, my name is Priscilla and I'm married to Pastor Dinko. We're going to say the Lord's Prayer together as we close this time of worship. Ready? Begin. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I hope everybody is staying safe. I miss you and I hope to see you really soon. Bye.